Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Macaulay's special event for parents of newly accepted students. My name is Stephanie Strathy, and I'm the Director of Individual Giving here at the college, where I also serve as parent liaison. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We have designed an evening just for you so that you can hear from Macaulay families about why they and their students decided that our honors program was the right choice for them. We know that you and your students need to make your own college decision by May 1st, and we hope you will choose Macaulay. To give you a broad understanding of our honors college community, we have put together a diverse panel of current and alumni parents who will share personal stories of their own Macaulay experiences. Later on during the Q&A, we will invite you to ask questions about classes, culture, community, or anything else. We want you and your students to have all of the information you need to make an important choice that will impact the next four years and beyond. Before I introduce our parent panelists, I'd like to share a pre-recorded message from Macaulay's interim dean, Dr. Vanessa Valdez. Dr. Valdez is out of the country and unfortunately couldn't join us tonight, but here is her personal welcome to you this evening. Welcome, prospective Macaulay families, and congratulations to your students on being accepted to Macaulay Honors College, class of 2026. We are delighted that you could join us tonight for an event that has been designed exclusively for you. Choosing the right college has always been important, but the pandemic has underscored the fact that students need and want a community both for personal connection and growth, and for academic exploration and success. Macaulay is a nurturing and compassionate community of scholars who are committed to furthering equity, diversity, and inclusion in all aspects of our college. Macaulay is also committed to providing its students with an unrivaled honors education. In the past few years, Macaulay has been consistently ranked as one of the top seven honors colleges in the nation. Our secret sauce? Rigorous honors seminars with small class sizes, top faculty, personalized advisement, opportunities fund grants for study abroad, internships or research initiatives, career services for life, a four-year merit scholarship for New York State residents, and the opportunity to graduate with little or no debt. We know your students are hard workers, high achievers, and big dreamers. We hope that they will bring their work ethic, their talents, and their aspirations to Macaulay Honors College. Our graduates, the oldest not quite 40, are everywhere achieving great heights in whatever careers they choose, finance and accounting, law, medicine, technology, the arts, education, and more. And they are all working to serve and improve life in their communities. Tonight's event, where you will hear from current and alumni Macaulay parents, might make you and your students say, without hesitation, Sign me up for Macaulay. We certainly hope that will be the case. Again, thank you for coming tonight, and I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you, Dean Valdez, for being with us in spirit. And now I would like to invite our panelists to turn on their cameras and join me on screen. Our order of speakers will be Steve Borello, parent of Joe in the class of 2014, Stevie in the class of 2016, and Michael in the class of 2019. Yes, you heard right, three Macaulay graduates. Ruth Noemi Colon, parent of Gerson in the class of 2019, Robin Berger, parent of Lewis in the class of 2018, Jimmy Coe, parent of Kyra in the class of 2019, and Marian Howie, parent of Jeremy in the class of 2022. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Steve, please start us off and tell us about your family's experience at the college. Absolutely, well, congratulations and welcome to everyone, hopefully welcome. 
I have had, my wife and I have had the good fortune of having three of our children, all three go to Macaulay. And just like I'm sure many of you have, we had visited top schools around the whole East Coast area, uh, Ivy League schools, and really looking for top schools for all three of our children. Very fortunate they were all you know, high achievers. And someone recommended at one point, have you heard of Macaulay? And I really had not. And my, my oldest at the time was looking to study engineering and was really focusing on Cooper Union and Olin College, which at the time were the only full scholarship schools. And when we came to see Macaulay, it was an eye opener. And the eye opener was really the students themselves. The presentation that the students made, a panel, we'll never forget it, the panel of six. This is going back to the year 20, 2009. A panel of six students from Macaulay explaining what they had already accomplished in only the first couple of years of schooling. And by the time they had graduated, it was something that was by far and away the best presentation I had seen at any of the schools we visited. Uh, so needless to say, my, my son was also impressed and said yes to Macaulay, and we've never turned back. We've been thrilled ever since. Uh, Joey was a biomedical engineering student, graduated, is currently finishing his PhD. He's working at Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, he has a project going on right now with the doctors where they're just about ready to, this week. They'll be implanting a mesh device, which he was part of developing for heart research and uh, a very le less invasive than the current practices. So he's doing fantastic. Uh, my daughter graduated in 2014 and she took a different path. She took a path that actually involved uh, the CUNY BA program. And again, I can't speak enough about that program for students who would like to develop their own major in something that doesn't exist exactly as they would want it. She did that. She was a real go-getter. She took classes at several different colleges really focused on the program she wanted at the time. She was very involved with writing, looking to do a career in writing. Uh, during her experience at Macaulay, she had the good fortune of using the Opportunities Fund to go to France to study over the summer. She also had the opportunity with a group to visit Cuba at a time that Cuba was not even open to the public. Came back and published some of her writings in USA Today at that time interned with ABC News, uh, has really never looked back and done fantastic work in the entertainment and uh, field and do done documentaries, focusing on many productions now. She expanded from writing to video work and is now on the level of associate producer and executive producer, depending on the project she's on. Um, actually had a chance to work recently with uh, Grimes, who was involved with Elon Musk and did something with them also for the Met Gala. Uh, my son also had a chance to use the Opportunities Fund, and I can't say enough about that. For those of you who hopefully, hopefully all of you come to Macaulay, we've really got to focus on keeping that Opportunities Fund going because it is such a tremendous opportunity for the students. My son didn't use it for travel, but he did use it for a research project. And that research project really got his enthusiasm and, and interest off the ground to work on different things while he was at City College Engineering. Uh, so it, it's something that has been very, very successful in getting the students to really promote their interests in a way that is well beyond the classroom. But uh, that was my, my daughter was a different pathway. My youngest son was also engineering, chemical engineering, uh, did really well, again, focused on using the resources at City College also and using people's talents to learn as much as possible outside of just chemical engineering and was able to get a full scholarship doing his PhD program right now at UC Berkeley. And just yesterday got back to me to let me know that he's actually part of a presentation that doing something in nuclear engineering at the national conference. And it's actually the only student group doing that. So again, I, I am so, so proud of, my wife and I are proud of our students, but we are so grateful to what Macaulay has allowed them to do to build upon their talents you will find that the students at Macaulay push each other to a level that is really exciting to see. It's a competitiveness that has a friendship involved in a way that really lets kids blossom. It brings out the best of them. Uh, my son who's out in California still keeps in touch with the students that in his, were in his class. We Zoom with him on Sunday nights and when we finish Zooming, he usually Zooms with his friends from Macaulay. So it's something that they've kept in touch with. My son, Joe, who graduated in 2014, same thing, has kept in touch with many Macaulay friends. My daughter, this, this weekend, is actually going to a wedding in New Hampshire for one of the people she graduated with. So it's, it's been something that's been lifelong experiences. 
Uh, it's, I can't say enough good things about what students have available to them, not only in the area that they're focusing on for academics, but outside the classroom. Uh, my sons and my daughter were also very involved with music and particularly my sons, very good jazz musicians and they wanted to do something at college. And when my oldest son, Joe was there, there was no program yet that was doing that. So he and a group of students went to the organizations and said, okay, can we start a jazz club? And they did. The Macaulay Connections is still going on. Uh, and that's been going on since he was there. And that was, I think, 20, 2008 when they may have started that. Uh, had a chance to play many, many different gigs. Uh, the Gala Fund they've played. My son, Michael, was also involved with that as a jazz musician. Uh, so again, that was something very, very uh, helpful for the students outside the classroom to keep their interest in, in things, not just classroom related, but life related. Uh, so Macaulay's opportunities go so far beyond just an opportunities fund, but with students who have an interest to be able to promote their interests outside the classroom and the friendships involved. Uh, again, I, I, I just, I will speak of Macaulay forever in a very positive way because I can't believe how it's the best of all worlds you can possibly look for in college. And you, I'm someone also who's a lifelong educator. For 35 years, I was a public school math teacher and administrator. And for 10 years after I retired, I worked at two different colleges. So I've seen colleges. I know how colleges operate. And I've seen the good things in schools. And Macaulay has brought it all together in a way to really focus on students. And there's something else I think is so important. And I've seen a difference over the period that from the time my first son went in to my youngest graduated, about 11 year period altogether. I've seen how Macaulay has looked for students, not only in the classroom, not only for their own interests, but looking at them from an emotional point of view. Unfortunately, you hear many stories today of students who are having issues that are not brought to the surface, but Macaulay has had counseling services in many way and enhanced those counseling services to students to be able to make sure that they're okay every way possible. And as a parent, there's nothing more important than that. So I have to say again, academically, socially, emotionally, my gosh, I, I can't think of a better place to possibly send my child. And I, I hope that my grandchildren are ready to go to school. Macaulay is still able to do what they're doing at this point. Um, all three of my kids have had very successful careers beyond Macaulay. Uh, and they're just, the sky is the limit. The friendships that they've made, the, the connections of Macaulay, uh, uh, I, I can't say enough good things. So, you know, by all means, please uh, feel free. You can contact me, Stephanie, you'd be happy to give my information to anybody who has a question. Having three kids go through this and having, you know, the situations that they dealt with, be happy to share anything with people at any time if, if I can possibly help them also. Um, I, I haven't kept track of my time. I don't know if I've gone over. I hope I haven't gone over, but I, Oh, you're I, good, again. Steve. You're okay, good. So, but thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you again, and good luck. Best of luck to everybody. Thanks, Steve. Okay, Ruth, I think you're up next. Yes. Uh, good evening, and, and welcome to all of you. And uh, Congratulations. Uh, this is a very competitive program, so if your son or daughter was accepted to it, it really, really, you deserve a big, huge congratulations. And three kids, three children going to the program is, is amazing. And Sid mentioned a few things that are very important about the program, the, the counseling, the opportunities fund, all that, but he didn't mention also the financial part, and it's something that I will touch on it. Um, free tuition is also important. Uh, so my son, uh, as Sid mentioned, we went to different schools, like very, very high level schools. We, I believe he was accepted at the school of his choice, Boston University. But um, when we received the letter from uh, Macaulay, or well, actually it was an email because it was no letters, uh, it was an email. We sat down with our son and we said, you know, we know that you wanted to go to Boston, but this is a great opportunity. He had gone to uh, so, uh, this program, uh, this uh, program with the panelists for students, and he was impressed with everybody that spoke so he really took it seriously and he was like, this is where I want to go, but this is a really great opportunity. And also being in the city for him was important. Um, he went to Hunter College and the diversity, the, the diversity there with students like old and young, different cultures, it was really important. And he, he was impressed about, about that. So we sat down 
as I mentioned. And we told him, you know, we know that you want to go to Boston, but this is a great opportunity. And he, he recognized that that was a great, a huge opportunity. And he took like one day to think about it. And then he said, you know, mom and dad, I'm here for the long run. He knew that he wanted to do a doctorate degree. So uh, being a good son, he was like, if, we go, if I go to Macaulay and Hunter, I know that the tuition part will be a great help for you guys. And then you can help me with my master and my doctorate degree. So that there was an agenda there, <laughs> um, which is true. So as I was saying, it's not only the emotional support, the, the advisors that they have, great advisors. I will talk about that later. It was also the financial part that he knew that he was going to be in Southern for a long time and being able to have four years of tuition free without any student loans uh, was, was a big factor for him and, and his, his decision because at the end we told him it's your decision, not our decision, it's your education. And we think that it's a great uh, opportunity, but it's your uh, um, decision. He was accepted, he, he accepted the opportunity, he did great. As Steve mentioned, they have the art in New York City, they had different programs that he really took advantage of them. He not only went to school in Hunter and Macaulay, but also he went to museums, he went to different events, he went to the theater, he went to opera. He took advantage of everything, everything that the program offers. Um, he also used the opportunity for not to travel. He did travel, he would study in Amsterdam, but he didn't use the opportunity for, for that. He did use it for a conference that he went, he, He's in clinical psychology. There was a conference in, in Chicago that he wanted to go. And he used the opportunity for, for that and for research. And at that conference, that actually he used the opportunity for, for that, but Hunter was the one sending him. When he came back, he was so happy that he went because he was the only student that was invited for that conference. He didn't realize that until he got there. Um, everybody was already working with professors, were uh, professional in the field working. He was the only student that was invited. Uh, it has to do with the great education that he was receiving both in Macaulay and Hunter. Um, so again, he came back. He was at that moment, he was applying for his master's degree at Columbia University and he met a professor over there of Columbia University that he was following the research that the professor was doing. So he was able to go and introduce himself. Um, when he was accepted at Columbia University, that professor brought him to work in his research. So he, it was a great experience. Unfortunately, then the pandemic came and he finished the last year from home, but it was a great experience working with that professor um, in that research. And it's all because of, of all the tools that the Macaulay program offers. Um, as I mentioned, the advisor that they have for education is really good. They take care of the students. They really make these relationships with them. They know the, the student not only in the academic level, but also as a person, as a, a whole student. Uh, it's the holistic um, view that they have. So they were able to work with the student, but also with whatever college they go to, whatever school they go to, Brooklyn, Hunter, uh, whatever school, they also have advisors. So the Macaulay advisor work with them too. So it's, it's, it's like a team working with, you, with your son or daughter. So you cannot ask for more. It's like they are being like molding. It's like they have been driving them from different uh, areas. So again, they work as a team. Macaulay with whatever school they go to, I cannot say even more than that. They are so, so good. Um, my son right now doing his PhD in Boston. So he finally got to go to Boston <laughs> from Columbia University. He went to Summit um, University in Boston. And again, all is because the great foundation that he received. He applied to different programs. This is the one that he really wanted because the, there's a professor there that is working in the area that he wants. He, he wants to work with teenagers. 
And there is a professor there that is doing a great uh, work with teenagers and the research that this professor is doing is, he really liked it. He not only was accepted to the school, he was accepted to work with that professor in that research. So he is really thriving and he is blossoming and he is very happy. And it's all because of the foundation and the tools that the Macaulay program gives. But I want to talk also not only about the student, I want to talk to you as parents, because pre-pandemic, I don't know what are they doing now, but pre-pandemic, they used to have also events for parents. So you go to these uh, programs, these, they have panelists, they have uh, conferences, they have uh, different things for parents that I found interesting and very motivational and also learning. It's like you keep learning also with your, with your daughter and son and make you part of that community because you then get to know also the parents, not only your son or daughter, or in the case of Steve was three children, you get to know the parents at this event. So for me, it was not only the students, it was the family. And for me, it made this community that, again, my son graduated in 2019, and I'm still coming here to events and to help and whatever they, you know, I can help, I will be there because it's, you become part of this family that is the Macaulay, Macaulay group. Um, I think that I use less than six minutes, but I'm going to leave more time for other parents and I'm here for any, any questions that you can have and, and that I can help answering. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Robin? Thank you, Stephanie. Can you hear me? So it's, uh, it's a real privilege to be uh, talking to parents uh, about uh, Macaulay. It's an amazing program. And I, I really, I second everything Steve and, and Ruth said. Um, that um, my son, Lewis, graduated from Macaulay Hunter in 2018. Um, he was accepted to a number of colleges and got full scholarships, but we chose Macaulay. Um, and we chose Macaulay for a number of reasons. And I say we, because uh, it was a joint decision. It was Lewis's decision in the end, but it was, you know, we advised him on it, let's put it that way. Um, number one, and this is coming from a kid who grew up in North Dakota. I went to college in New York City a long time ago. And it was, the most transformative experience of my life, believe me. The opportunity to go to college in New York City is amazing. Um, and I told Lewis this, and I said, if you get an opportunity to, to spend four years in New York City uh, going to college, it's going to be distracting, right? But, um, you know, that's part of the challenge of, of uh, going to school. You're going to be distracted, but you're also going to have to, um, you know, maintain uh, academic standards. Um, so uh, New York City was a, a big part of it. Um, also, obviously, tuition free. Uh, and I think, um, you know, that was not the major part of it, but it was certainly part of it. Third quality uh, I, I really want to emphasize probably most of all is uh, a bit of inside information that we have. My wife um, has been a teacher in New York City uh, high school for over 20 years. And she's had the opportunity to get to know and recommend uh, a number of her students uh, to Macaulay. And she has said consistently among all the students that she recommends or she's, she's gotten to know that have gotten into you know very good schools the quality of the macaulay students by far uh, has excelled everyone and believe me she's not easy to please which makes me wonder why she married me but that's another story um, 
So, you know, this was confirmed for us very shortly after Lewis started going to school. He made a number of lifelong friends, I will call it. Uh, and um, he's in touch with them. He socializes with them uh, all the time. In fact, his girlfriend uh, went to school at Macaulay and, and he's uh, spending time with her right now. So uh, the, 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 the quality of the students is, is I think is, is important because, you know, it's, it's the social environment that students are in is, is, is obviously a big part of, of a college experience. Um, Lewis struggled a little bit in his first year. He wasn't quite prepared for the college experience. Um, he took on too many classes, unfortunately. But he had an excellent advisor, and, uh, and he managed to graduate and do very well. So I think it was, it was in large part due to the advice that he'd gotten from his advisor that he was very quickly, that he was able very quickly to turn around and, um, and, and do really quite well. So the, the quality of the advice that students get at Macaulay is, is excellent. Um, he, uh, he did use the Opportunity Fund, he did use it to travel. Uh, he went to, uh, he spent four weeks in Florence in 2017, uh, had a great time. It was the first time he ever traveled to a country uh, where he didn't speak the language. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that he will value for the rest of his life. It was, it was, a, uh, it was an excellent opportunity. Um, and uh, the Steve and Ruth talked about the honors seminars uh, that Macaulay has. Lewis was, was particularly uh, attracted to the Arts in New York City um, honors seminar. I mean, if you can imagine New York City, all the arts, the opportunities for, for um, taking advantage of, of the arts in New York City, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's incomparable, obviously. Uh, so that was, that was huge for him. Uh, and, um, you know, like, like Ruth and, and uh, Steve said, it's just, I can't, I can't say enough good things about, about Macaulay. It's, uh, it's, it's been excellent. Great. Thanks, Robin. Jimmy. Hi, uh, my daughter, Kyra, uh, graduated from uh, City College with a Bachelor in Engineering for Mechanical Engineering in 2019, and uh, when she first you know, brought up, brought up to us that she wants you know she wants to go to uh, Macaulay at CCNY, uh, we weren't really quite sold on it, but you know we trust our children to make the right decision to determine what's best fit for her, right? And I think she's made out quite well, and uh, my wife and I are very happy that she did. Uh, make that decision and so that's you know the proof's kind of in the pudding like right? that you know Stephanie would tell you that I remain very much engaged with uh, Macaulay even after she graduated I volunteer you know I mentor students and uh, in the tech field right so <clears throat> you know, that just kind of proved that you know we want to give back to Macaulay for what Macaulay has given to my daughter. So right, right now, uh, she's uh, about to graduate from uh, Georgia Tech with a master's in uh, engineering and aeronautical engineering. Uh, she is working at uh, G Aviation uh, in the, she's about to graduate from the Edison program where they have uh, training and rotating pro uh, the st you know, students in the program through uh, different department. And so she gets to work on like a, uh, you know, plane and helicopter uh, engines. So she was working on uh, the Black Hawk helicopter engines, right? So, you know, for somebody that just came out of uh, college, she get to uh, work in that field, right? And um, why she was in Macaulay, uh, she really enjoyed the diversity and, uh, you know, like the art in New York seminar that, you know, where she's able to go to Broadway shows, the museums and concerts and, you know, she's into music because you know, she played like cello, violin, you know, viola, piano. And you know, so she was in like, some sort of chamber group while she was at uh, Macaulay. And 
also, you know, she was able to take opportunity funds to take a class in Japan. Uh, so uh, it was actually sponsored by Queens College, which she wasn't going, but through Macaulay, she was able to uh, join the, the Queens College trip uh, to Japan to uh, take the class there for Japanese film and culture class. So even though she's in the tech field, uh, she actually is very much into you know culture and other aspect of it. And Macaulay gave her the opportunity to explore those. Right. So um, you know, I think uh, you know, as other parents mentioned, with like a you know, great advisor and uh, or registration for classes that you know, Macaulay advisors are uh, expedite for the students and you know all of these. I don't want to you know kind of repeat it, but you know those are also value valuable to our. Uh, to Cairo. And, you know, uh, that's the last thing, you know, congratulations on all the students that got, got accepted and uh, to this very competitive program. And just remember, this is the only, you know, first major step. There are additional steps and that this will allow you to build a good foundation, problem solving ability, learning to deal with, you know, uh, different people from different backgrounds. And those are all valuable skills that you're going to pick up when you're Calling. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, Marianne, you're our final speaker. Um, I remember listening to Jimmy at my parents' uh, session, you know, four, four years ago, I guess, right? So Jeremy is, um, I think one of the things I really appreciate about Macaulay is uh, like the other kids, Jeremy was accepted to, you know, wonderful schools and um, we picked Macaulay. He had initially decided or had plans that he wanted to go far away from home and then ironically did not. So we're in Nassau County. So it did, it did involve some sort of transportation at different points, but he's at Hunter. So he had the first two years where he had housing downtown and he really, really enjoyed that. Um, obviously COVID threw things up for a little bit of a loop, um, but he was able to get through that. I think one of the most interesting things about the conversation is actually um, my son at some point, because when he first entered was thinking about doing a poli-sci major and somewhere in there, he fell in love with physics. And so about a year and a half into college, like many kids who go to college, he decided that he wanted to essentially completely change paths and he wanted to do physics. And he had taken a number of physics courses, I guess, by this point, he's a year and a half in, it's mid sophomore year. And he calls us and says he wants to leave Hunter and by definition then leave Macaulay. And we're like, well, well, we've also learned that we do not push against decisions that Jeremy is making, it only blows up for us. So, um, you know, we asked him why and he, he said he didn't really, um, find that the classes he had taken in physics were really ones that he felt were where he wanted to be. And I said, okay, well, you know, go and talk to the people there and figure it out and let them know. And by that point, this child who had wanted to go to school, you know, on the other side of the country had now been convinced that he only wanted to go to school in Manhattan. And he wanted to go to a place that had a really good math program um, and it had to be applied math, not some other math. Anyway, the answer was the only school that fits this criteria was Columbia. So, so I said, okay, so you're basically telling me you want to go to one other school. That is your option. And he said, well, yes. I said, fine. So he went to um, Lev uh, Sverdov runs the Macaulay program at Hunter. And he um, said, well, I guess I'll just, I'll go talk to Lev and I'll see if he'll write me a recommendation letter. I was like, first of all, that's Dr. Spiridoff to you. That's not Lev. He's like, no, 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 Everybody calls him Lev, it's Lev. And I'm like, okay, child, go into the world and do your thing. Whatever it is that you want to talk to Lev about, okay. Because again, we've been pretty hands off. I had met, I'd met Lev, Dr. Spiridoff, and he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And so Jeremy goes to talk to talk to Lev. And in this discussion, he says, essentially, you know, I'm, I'm interested in switching schools. Will you write me a letter to transfer to Columbia? And Lev, as, as a wise, wise parent, says, sure, I'll write that letter. But first, you need to go talk to this guy. 
And Jeremy says, well, who's this guy? And, and this guy was Dr. Greenbaum, who's, um, it seems, one of the most esteemed physics teachers at Hunter. Um, and so Jeremy goes to talk to um, Dr. Greenbaum. And Jeremy had heard through the other Macaulay grapevine that Dr. Greenbaum, clearly Lev had already called him, um, had been asking questions about Jeremy from some of the other Macaulay students. And Jeremy says, I think, I think he's going to offer me a job because like he's asking these people questions about me. So Jeremy goes and he talks to Dr. Greenbaum. Dr. Greenbaum <coughs> and Jeremy talk, and this is about a month before finals. And um, again, as per my child, Jeremy um, has a nice time, has a great time talking to Dr. Greenbaum, and then disappears from the face of the earth for Dr. Greenbaum for at least another month. He goes back a month later after bumping into someone in a hallway and says, Dr. Greenbaum, you know, what you were talking about, um, you know, can I still come do that job that you were talking about here? And Dr. Greenbaum says, of course you may. And he clears off a desk for Jeremy and he says, this is your desk, you come here. And then he also says, in addition, we haven't even talked about getting you on the payroll yet. Jeremy says, payroll? I didn't know there was a payroll involved in this. He already has a free tuition. So, you know, him getting paid for this was beyond what he was thinking. The level of advising involved in that transaction, excuse me, from Lev to Dr. Greenbaum, has led to Jeremy now presenting, I think there's like four national conferences he's presented at, has led to him having connections that got him an internship last summer. And I really can't explain this super well, but it's essentially using the physics of photosynthesis in a lab, it was done remotely, but in a lab in Northern uh, Arizona State, where he was working in a lab where they're essentially trying to create artificial uh, photosynthesis to create uh, uh, solutions for global warming. It has led to him being connected to a program where he went up for a week to MIT to um, be part of a group that was essentially being recruited to come in to um, look at MIT for PhDs um, and is gonna be doing an internship at Brown excuse me, in this summer, also with the idea of looking at it as a possible place to do a PhD. He has received support at a level I can only, I can, I will say is only present at a place like Macaulay. They pay attention, they know the kids, they know all this stuff about where they wanna go and what they wanna do. My son will now graduate with a double major in math and physics. By the way, in addition to the minor that they get from doing the programs that are Macaulay based, that's also, I, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, Ms. Trophy will be able to tell me, but it's, uh, it's like a New York City focused minor in addition because they get enough credits. He loved the courses, he loved the kids, it's been great. Congrats to all of you. Thanks, Marianne. And um, thanks to everybody on the panel who's spoken tonight. I can tell you so many questions have been coming in through our Q&A, like even before we're getting to the formal, you know, question and answer period. So we've been answering them, but now I think we're going to be starting to have you answer some of the questions that are coming in now. So again, I'm opening up the floor, you know, to everyone. So um, parents, prospective Macaulay parents, please, you know, type your questions on screen in the Q&A box and we'll be able to, you know, answer your questions for you. I think I have a couple though that have come in early. So let me take a look and I'm, I'm gonna kind of put it out to the crowd here. So let me just take a look. Okay, so this is for, um, I guess, the Hunter parents. So we have a couple of those. Um, one question is from parent here. Um, can you tell us a little about the dorms uh, on 25th Street? So the Brookdale Vale, uh, Brook, uh, dorms for Hunter. In particular, how many students per floor? How many RAs, safety, et cetera? So, you know, I don't know if you can answer all those questions, but for those of you who had students at Brookdale, you want to speak to that? Yes, Marianne. Uh -huh. 
that was a super selling point for Jeremy. Um, and we were exceptionally impressed with the safety. Before you can enter the dorms, um, you have to pass the security guard and they are showing, uh, you have to show your ID in order to get in. Um, you're not allowed to just meander in. There's also security once you get in the building. Um, it is one kid per room, which is mm -hmm. uh, pluses and minuses. I was kind of hoping Jeremy would actually learn how to share a room during college. Turns out that didn't happen. Um, there was a selling but, point for my son. He was by himself in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and they form, the Macaulay kids are on the same floor, so they form a very nice set of bonds during that time period. Um, there's also a pool in the, in the compound that Jeremy found. Um, and uh, as to how many per floor that I can't remember, but it seemed like a normal dorm size. Okay. Yes. I, I don't remember either how many students for per floor, but uh, what Marion said is, is they have the Macaulay students in one floor so they can talk. And there's, a, there's like a little kitchenette also where they can, mm -hmm. Uh, they also, they also and that's have... something that my son really enjoyed cooking with other people and also like living in the city you are right in the city um when you are 18 19 years old so it's it's a great experience so whoever asks a question is really really a good at least that's the experience that we had is that my son really enjoyed it I opened doors for him. He learned how to travel the city, how to take the subway, and all that good stuff. And I wanted yep. to add something to what Marianne said before about all these opportunities and something that I mentioned but didn't stress is like people in professional levels, they know about the Macaulay program. Mm -hmm. They know the, the kind of student that they have. They know the quality. So when they say that they are a Macaulay student, immediately people look at them and open door for them. My other job is, or my besides parenting my son, is um, I'm a professor of emergency medicine and I'm an associate program director and I've been a program director for two different residencies or actually three. And when the Macaulay kids would come through, we know what that means. Um, and it, it you know, the med school on the other side obviously has importance as well, but the Macaulay program has a real asterisk next to it in a good way. I will say one of the things about the dorms that is important to be aware of is that there's no dining hall really. So um, the kids have to figure out how with you, how they're gonna be getting healthy, nutritious food. Um, there is plenty available, they're on 25th and 1st, um, but that is something to think about, you know, that might be different from other schools. Okay, great. Robin, you wanna jump in as a, another hunter parent? It's been a while, but you know, um... I think pretty much everybody's covered it as far as Brookfield is concerned. Okay, great. I think we have another dorm question. Let me take a look here. Um, <laughs> ah, yes. Um, let's see, other, can parents speak to their children's social experience with dorming? Our daughter will be dorm, uh, dorming at Towers City College and commuting to Lehman. So this is a question about you know, social experiences. Uh, anyone wanna answer that one? Well, two of my students, two of my students, two of my children dormed at the towers. In fact, it turned out they were both RAs also uh, to try to offset the cost of, of the boarding. But uh, there's plenty of opportunities there for socializing. And again, the Macaulay people there are on the same level. Um, and, and I know there was a lot of organization. Michael in particular is a very social individual, and he used to really do a lot as one of the RAs to try to get things going for a lot of the people, not just Macaulay, but throughout the entire Towers population. But uh, yeah, it, it's pl there's plenty there at the Towers. And uh, for someone who actually went to City College back in the early 70s, it was, it was an amazing thing for me to see that there's dorming there and it was done in a way that was very impressive, I have to say. Okay, great, thanks, Steve. Um, another question um, is, um, Let's see, my other question is like, someone asked above as well that Macaulay speaks a lot about having a networking environment for the students like Ivy League colleges bring to the table. Does that help out or impact students' future in work, internships, or for graduate programs? 
So I guess, you know, the networking and things, career development, our career development, you know, events that we have that our students hold, I, I guess in terms of, you know, your kids' experiences, has, has that made an impact, you know, in terms of the graduate programs, jobs, that sort of thing? I mean, Jeremy, uh, wherever he ends up doing his next level of education is going to be due to all the connections that have been made through his um, connections at Macaulay. Um, it's different, I think, from that other networking aspect where people are pulling on the other side, but the Macaulay program has enough connections to help push the kids in the right direction, knowing what the kids want and like. Okay. Uh one thing I can say about the networking, and this is specific for engineering, because two of my children were engineering. Uh, City College, in many ways, you look at it, everything is in one building, Steinem Building for Engineering. And Michael had an opportunity to do an internship and spend some time out in University of Indiana. Uh, I'm sorry, at Purdue University. And it's gigantic. So there, every building is practically for a different level of engineering. By having it all in one building, Michael got so much out of being able to share, not only for chemical engineering, but mechanical, electrical, civil, you name it, biomedical, and use a lot of the equipment in ways that the opportunity is there to learn. So the networking he got by having it all in one location was actually a big positive and helped him later on. Mm. Great. Thank you. When uh, my daughter... Kara goes to recruiting events with uh, the G Aviation on, you know, like SACE or all these uh, different uh, recruiting events that she goes on. She will, you know, try to push uh, up the resume from you know, Macaulay students and you know, uh, that kind of is, you know, that's one of the things that uh, you will see that you know, Macaulay alumni are trying to help recruit uh, additional Macaulay students that way. Right. Okay, another question we have. This is this question is for Steve. Uh oh, I lost it here. Okay, question for Steve. Um, how could your child study abroad in Paris and Cuba with the funding of fifteen hundred dollars? Did you pay the extra out of your own pocket? No, it, it turned out Paris was a. I think it was either three or four weeks the one summer. That was really the opportunities fund. Cuba, it was not an opportunities fund program. It was something that was actually, uh, I think a one or two week program that she was there with a group of students that were selected to do that. And that was not actually part of the opportunities fund. But when all was said and done, it was pretty much able to be covered. And this is, and this is why I say it's so important that we maintain the opportunities fund. This was going back several years when there was a lot more money available and there were, much, there were fewer students at Macaulay. The Macaulay numbers have increased over the years, and we need to keep the opportunities fund, you know, at, at a level that these students of today have those same opportunities. And I could tell you that because I know my youngest son did not have the same necessarily opportunities because it was a little tighter. So uh, that's how it happened at that time, and it was very fortunate. The timing is a lot of, you know, for a lot of different things. But the more we can contribute and get people to contribute to the opportunities fund, the more kids will have these chances to do more than one experience potentially. And again, it's it's certainly one limit of one per person until everybody gets their share. But uh, it was, they were very lucky. My daughter was also, my daughter's, out, out of all my children, my daughter's the type of go-getter that she'll find ways to get a grant, do this research. I mean, she, she's amazing with that. I've never seen anybody quite uh, able to find sources of without knowing you know, where to start, but she'll find the way. Yeah, you know, Steve, thanks for that. And if I could jump in as, as the fundraiser right now, I, I do raise money for um, a quality honors college in addition to being uh, the parent liaison here. And all of you are very generous supporters of the college. So thank you very much for that. Um, in terms of the opportunities fund, you know, Steve is right. I mean, it used to be that we were able to offer $7,500 for each student, you know, who applied to the opportunities funds for study abroad mostly. Um, they, of course, we did internships and research, but it was really the study abroad that was the big ticket item for our students. Right now, we don't have that kind of funding available. We do have available $1,500 grants uh, that all students can apply for. That is not going to take you very far in terms of a study abroad program, uh, but we do have enhanced opportunities fund grants. So grants at the $2,500 level and some grants at the $5,000 level. 
And so like Steve said, you know, we, we do have some of those available. We encourage all of our students to check out, you know, the opportunities funds, you know, we, we offer, you know, application, the, the process about a couple of times during the year, in the fall and in the spring. And uh, again, like Steve says, we need to keep on raising, you know, private funds. And that's from, you know, parents, alumni, staff, faculty, uh, institutional donors, so that we can actually, you know, bulk up the amount of, of funding that we that we can offer our students. It's really important, this idea of experiential education, you know, the ability to, again, study abroad or uh, study here in the United States, do an internship or even do research. The idea being these are incredibly important learning experiences, you know, beyond the, 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 the walls of a traditional, you know, classroom. And so that is a foundation. Of, of, a, of a Macaulay education. And so it's important for us to really be able to uh, enhance that. And of course we have our, here's a commercial now, um, our uh, Opportunities Fund Gala, uh, where we'll be raising additional monies for the fund on May 19th. And so we'll be inviting uh, our constituents to join us so that we can make more opportunities available for our students. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Let's take a look at the time. Okay, we have about seven minutes. Let's see. Um, <laughs> oh, this is one that I think I can I can answer, but actually all the people here on the panel can answer too. Can you tell us about the Parents Council? Um, I can speak, but does anyone want to go first? since you're all members. Well, I guess I'll start, Stephanie, since this that's is- right, That's right, because that's right, because you're, you're one of our co-chairs. This is, this is related to uh, our actual activities, I, I think. Um, the uh, Parents Council has a recruitment committee and I'm co-chair of that committee with uh, Bahar Zogi. And, uh, you know, our mission statement, uh, if I can summarize it in a thumbnail, is, is basically to enhance the recruitment efforts for, for Macaulay. And I would consider this one of one of those efforts. So I'm happy to be part of this. Great. Thanks so much. Well, I, you know, like Robin said, it's a, it's this is a, a special group of Macaulay parents in the sense that they're really very committed to the future of the college. And it's a leadership giving group. And uh, we do, um, we, we, we do uh, solicit gifts from parents and that goes to the opportunities fund. So again, like we were saying before, you know, that's a really important priority for the college is to really increase our fundraising. And it's for our students. I mean, all of this is for our students and providing you know, as many different kinds of opportunities for them as we can. So, you know, um, we have working committees on our parents council. We have a few events during the year. It's not a burdensome kind of commitment. Um, and it's a great opportunity. I think like, you know, Ruth was saying earlier to really meet, you know, with other parents who are involved in the council and to get to know each other, get to know the, the needs of the school and the priorities of the school and to really be a much more involved partner in what we do. So we hope that you know, all of the new parents who are going to be coming into Macaulay this year, class of 2026 parents, you know, we hope that you'll join us. Uh, we'll welcome your participation and we'd love to have you with us. Can um, I say something else? Yes, okay. I have room. When I was um, as a parent, something else that we did is we had this group to about the jobs, like to open up for jobs. Like I was able to uh, give to the advisors internship where I used to work. Um, that it was mostly for engineers, also to talk about it kind of a network, not only for the parents, but also for the student that can help, um, can use our experiences or our jobs to look for internships, to look for orientation, to talk about the, the different areas of, of education or work. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, I think we have time for maybe a couple of more questions, or at least one. Um, let's see. As a parent, I'm concerned that my child finds the right career path and is able to get a job with opportunities for growth once she graduates. 
do your students feel that they have good access to career development services or that they did have access to career development services that, that were good? Anyone want to jump in? I think so. I think that all of us have spoke about that in terms of the networking, the opportunities for conferences, uh, how they also went to, to different areas. And as I mentioned, also even the parents talk about the careers and where they were working and open up for internships. I think it does help, or it did have an impact of in, in our, at least in my son, I cannot speak about the other parents. But for my son, it was it, it was it really have an influence and help him get into other areas and keep moving up in what again he knew from the beginning that he wanted to do a PhD because he wanted to study clinical psychology and he knew that with an undergrad or a master's degree it was not going to be enough. So from the beginning he knew what he wanted and he was able to use all, all the tools and the network working that um, Macaulay was offering. Great. Thanks. Anyone else want to jump in about career development and the services and how that might have helped folks get jobs or internships? I think, again, New York City, the internship opportunities are second to none and top, top organizations that students have been placed with. So uh, that's really been a great way to build up the kind of experience that gets you into the door for an interview. And once they're there, these students have been able to sell themselves. Great. Okay, I think we have time for just one more question. So here it is. 